you know, the plastic surgeon said to me, you know, she tried to put me off. I had a cyst and she's like, this is going to scar. This is in a really bad spot. I'm like, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. You just do what you got to do. Yeah. I'll yeah. I've got that kind of thing. <laughs> and I was using topical copper peptide. I was using topical nitric oxide serum. I was using BPC-157 wow. topically. Wow. I used a fragment of thymosin beta-4 that is antifibrotic. Then I was injecting GHK. I was using the stem regen like by the handful. Holy shit. You're even worse than me. You're like more full out than I am. Oh yeah. No, I was doing all the things I was like, you know, and, and, you know, I didn't want this thing. And sure enough, like it's, you, I, it, you can't, you can't anything happening there wow. and because scar tissue of course you know it, it it has a different substance and it really causes uh trouble in the body it, it pulls it out of shape so to speak and, and yeah, well it know, attaches it, it binds things to, it's to, mobile. Yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 so you don't want scar tissue forming oh wow okay so not just you know i've been yeah the ghkcu you know just topically in my skin creams to you know keep the so skin topically and it is great but I yeah. would say that it, it, it is it also is very injectable. powerful and it even has cognitive benefits. Like go figure, like it's wow. just it, GHK is one of those peptides. Like the more you research, the more stuff there is now, again, there, it, there's not a huge amount of human research here, mm. but definitely topically there's, I think there's an, you know, it's a, it's a no brainer. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, your skin just, you, you know, yourself that your skin went, looks better after using that for a little while, you know? Yeah. Um, Okay, so so what are some of the other ones? So BPC one five seven, it's quite a famous peptide, and a lot of people do have. If they've heard about anything, they've probably heard about that one. Uh, body protective compound. You can have this yeah. orally. So like with my mum, had a GI bleed, um, and I I had her the the, the injectable BPC one five seven, but I didn't have the the oral. So I you know scavenged around to get the oral for her um, because taken orally that's going to help the digestive system more than the systemic bpc injections probably well, this, yeah i mean the systemic will do both yeah okay. the systemic will help the gi tract it's just you end up having when you have a lot of demand yeah you end up having to use more right the yeah. the oral is at least it's getting there it's going exactly to where you want it to go mm -hmm. so it, which is part of the reason why I think taking it orally is less effective for musculoskeletal issues because it's going to get used up along the way, right? It's yep. like, It'll right? go to so, where it's been sent first. And how yep. many people don't have an issue in their GI tract somewhere? How many people don't have some degree of leaky gut oh, well, yeah. um, that needs to be, that needs to be addressed. And so, so BPC-157, like I kind of call it like the Swiss army knife of peptides, right? Because it has benefits for the brain. It has benefits for anti it's anti-inflammatory. It is, it has pain. It can help with um, mitigating the downsides of uh, steroids, right? So it can offset, it offsets the negatives of non-steroidal anti-inflammatories. Like let's say somebody really needed them and yeah. says, yeah. BPC-157 can help to mitigate the, neg the downsides of that. Wow. Wow. Um, it's, I mean, I know I'm forgetting stuff. And, you know, is it a bioregulator? Of... Like, is it, you know, because it's a tablet form, it's not considered a bioregulator even in the it's tablet. It's too big. Form. Yeah, too big. it's too big. And it and it doesn't just like the bioregulator only binds to genes. BPC 157, I actually do believe it it has some impact on certain genes, but most of its actions is done as a because it attaches to receptors. Mm -hmm. Right. So, um, you know, so what's really cool sometimes when we, we think about, well, what peptides would work really well together, there's a category of peptides called growth hormone secretagogues yeah. that, yeah, yeah. that help the body to release more yep. growth hormone. Right. And yep. typically it's not going to do it in a super physiologic way. Like you're yeah. not, it's not it's as good. powerful as using actual growth hormone, but you know, what's really interesting about BPC is that it upregulates the expression of growth hormone receptors in the body. Oh, So wow. when you're using it at the same time as the growth hormone secretagogues and you're trying to address an injury, like how cool it is it that now all of a sudden you have more growth hormone floating around and you've got more catcher's mitts hanging out waiting for growth hormone. Wow, I didn't know. So so things like CJC, epimorelin, tesamorelin, yeah. combined with BPC, which yeah, so I have my one synerg They're very synergistic when wow. you're trying to heal injury. Oh, wow. That is just, that, that's gold. And, and and to just back up and explain to people, because, you know, peptides are still a, a new thing. Um, so, so the peptides are usually subcutaneous injections, and that puts a lot of people off, and you have to, you know, get 
bacteriostatic water or you know and you have to get syringes and you have to mix it um and then and you have to poke a needle in you. yeah yeah which is actually <laughs> so minor 